And the Lord be with you. This is Pastor Van Syke. You're with Easter 2, the second Sunday in Easter, with the readings and uh, the children's message, and a, and a sermon, and, a, and prayers. And I pray that God be with you as we're separated here this time with the uh, coronavirus and the stay at home. And I'm, thank you for so many of you who are viewing this and using this as part of your spiritual strength during this time. So may that continue. And um, there was no Dear Heart letter sent out this past week because by power supply on my computer that has all the uh, groupings of emails, it died. So I've got the part ordered. Lord willing, I'll have that, that patched and fixed by, uh, by Monday. And uh, I'll send out the links for the Lifelight Midweek Bible Study, the, the Zoom gatherings for that. So um, I'll be watching for that. So now let's continue. Uh, with uh, the second Sunday of Easter celebration, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Pause the video to reflect on the words of the opening verses. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are, by nature, sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us Bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The collect for the day, for the second uh, Sunday in Easter, we pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord. The first reading now is from Acts, as the Old Testament readings are, are suspended through the season of Easter, and it is, they are replaced by readings from Acts, uh, the, the accounts of the early Christian church. And so this week, from Acts chapter 5, and 29 to 42. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the crowd named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And then he said to the people, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Theatis rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about four hundred, joined him, he was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census 
and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice. And when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they had been counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading from uh, the first letter of Peter, chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy, has caused us to be born again, to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him, now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. On the evening of that day, The first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand, and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Dear friends, great to see you today. Now, Let's remember back as we talked about uh, the week of um, after Jesus was resurrected, after Holy Week when he died on the cross on Good Friday and rose again 
on the Sunday, the first day of the week. Now, he appeared to his disciples and uh, said, Peace be with you, and they were all amazed to see him resurrected. And he taught them and encouraged them. But there was one of the disciples that wasn't there. His name was Thomas. And when they said, oh, Thomas, you should have been there. We, we saw the Lord. And he, he had some questions. He didn't believe it. He, how could he believe it? He, he hadn't seen it. So he had some questions like, well, how could that happen? And where is he now? Well, it's okay to ask questions. But Thomas had questions. And those of you who are learning to read have learned that this is a question mark. You see how it's kind of stooped over and bent over? Because sometimes when you have questions, you're just weighed down by not having the answers. And Thomas was weighed down by wondering, is it true? Can Jesus really be risen? Well, it was a week later. Once again, they were in the same place. Thomas was with them this time, and Jesus appeared to them. And Thomas was amazed. And Jesus said, come here, Thomas, put your hand where the nails were and, and on my hands and, and put your hand into my side where they put the spear in me to show that I was truly dead. I'm not dead. I'm alive now. And Thomas, instead of asking questions, because Jesus didn't give him a hard time for asking questions, he welcomed him and loved him. And it made Thomas exclaim, my Lord and my God. This is an exclamation point. See, it's not bent over like a question mark is. And uh, so we remember Thomas not for being a doubter, but for proclaiming my Lord and my God when he saw the resurrected Jesus. So it's okay to have questions about God and questions about Jesus. And uh, those questions can weigh us down unless we go to God's word, the Bible, to find the answers. And then we, like Thomas, can say, my Lord and my God. Thank you for listening. Pause the video and meditate on the message verses. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to Easter chapter chapter 2. He's the second Sunday of Easter, not in Easter, but of Easter. It's a seven-week celebration of the resurrection of Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now, the word for this week, from Acts chapter 5, but Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There was a phrase that chased me this week and caught me as a phrase from an old song going back 47 years when I was a, uh, in my teens. Uh, the River City Street Band was a, a local band from Fayetteville, Arkansas. They kind of hit the small time, if you will. They had a single released as they recorded on the Enterprise label out of Memphis. Now, yeah, that was a, a subsidiary label of the famous R&B label Stax records for out of Memphis. So they had the subsidiary label Enterprise and they had a contract and uh, released an album with the River City Street Band. Now the original music, uh, they played a lot of original music and not much many covers which was kind of neat for a local band that they their their original stuff was pretty good. Now the single though was uh, kind of a soft rock sound you know, from the early 70s, and it was along the line of maybe the Carpenters or, or the band that, you know, that was named Bread, soft rock kind of music. So the River City Street Band uh, released a song, and it was the first local band uh, and the first single that I remember getting so tired of as I began my career as a disc jockey about that same time in 1973. The song was a sappy, pleasant song to hear the first 35 times but after that it got to the point where I would announce the record take off my headphones plunk them down and turn the monitor down and not listen to the song I was so tired of hearing it but I remembered now these are the phrases that that chased me down this week in the context of of our uh, coronavirus uh, stay at home uh, situation as um, the the lines opening lines to the song and uh, I double-checked online. I was surprised. I was able to find it. And sure enough, I remembered the line, the opening lines exactly here 45 years later. It starts out, 
Yeah, two different people in two different towns sharing a love that has no bounds. Being together while being apart, finding each other in each other's hearts. And I got that far online and I stopped it and uh, threw my headphones down like I had done 45 years ago the last time I heard the song. But the line in there is what, what chased me down this week. The lyrics were more forgettable. The rest of the lyrics are more forgettable than those, and so it doesn't matter. But uh, during our, our description of our congregational fellowship during this virus stay-at-home practices, we are being together while being apart. Being together while being apart. We're not, we're, we're, we are choosing not to come together at this time. Yet while being apart, we are together in Christ. Now the disciples were being apart when they scattered as Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. Only John is mentioned as being present at the crucifixion cross where Jesus died for our sins on Good Friday. But now Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now after the resurrection of Jesus, we first see the disciples together but apart from the world while they're hiding behind locked doors. They were afraid of being captured and crucified just as Jesus had been just a few days before. Now the doors were locked while they were sheltering in place when Jesus appeared to them. Now their fear turned from fear of the Roman government and from the, the, the temple uh, uh, leaders. Their fear now turned to the fact of what is this that's standing here in our presence that suddenly appeared and we, the doors are locked, so how did he get in here? And they, their fear turned to, to Jesus. What's going on here? Uh, Jesus comforts them and says, peace be with you. And as they heard, as you heard eight days later, Thomas, who had not been with them at the first time Jesus visited them, now he was. And at the end of the, the, the scene here, Thomas proclaims, my Lord and my God. They were together in Christ now. So they had been apart while being apart. Then they were together, but were hidden and apart from the world. And we move down the timeline a bit to the, in the book of Acts, where in the reading you heard today, we see the disciples are being together, but now are in public. They are in public. They boldly proclaim, we must obey God rather than men. Now, the, out of context, it's kind of an obscure line. It's like, well, what happened that made them say that? Well, if you back up in the book of Acts just a little bit, you see that the disciples were proclaiming in the temple and in the streets about Christ being resurrected, that he is the Messiah. He is the one who came to pay for our sins and uh, forgives us and wraps us in righteousness so that we can live with God forever. Well, now this was a challenge to the status quo in the temple, which was teaching people that they had to pay their temple taxes and they had to give to the priests a certain amount of things and do things just right so that uh, they could be judged accordingly and given forgiveness. And here the disciples were proclaiming, no, that's what Jesus came to do. He forgave us our sins and we are forgiven. So they came to the disciples and said, stop preaching this. And they arrested them and had them thrown into prison overnight. Now, while they were in prison overnight, the angels came and, and set them free. And uh, where did they go? Well, they went back into the temple, into the streets, and proclaimed about Jesus. Well, the temple leaders were ready to address them the next morning and sent for them to be brought from prison, from the jail. Word came back very quickly, they're not here, they're not here. And somebody else came running and said, the people you arrested are out in the streets and in the temple teaching about Jesus, this very person you told them not to talk about. So the temple leaders go out and confront Peter and the others and saying very specifically, we strictly charged you not to teach in this name. They couldn't even bring themselves to say Jesus. Yet here you filled Jerusalem with your teaching and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. So they're going to obey God who sent them out to teach about Jesus rather than these temple leaders who were trying to get them to stop teaching about Jesus and not gathering together in the name of Jesus. So this is one of the challenging texts that even applies today. We're called by God to gather in Christian fellowship 
But now there are some governors in some states who have outlawed Christians gathering together in worship. Now, I want to say we are not banned in Ohio. In Ohio, we are not banned from gathering together in worship. So why don't we? Well, first, we're confident in the, in the means of grace, which is word, baptism, and the Lord's Supper. So the word of God, that's why I include the readings in these videos, that uh, the, the word of God from the Bible gives us the comfort and the grace and the strength of our faith that we need. It strengthens our faith. And when we get together again later, because we recognize this is not a, an ongoing thing, we'll be able to enjoy the sacrament once again and, uh, and our Christian fellowship. So we're not banned from meeting in Ohio. We could meet together as a congregation. It's not illegal. But we do respect the government, as Paul would have us do in Romans chapter 13, to give respect uh, to those who need respect and honor to where honor is deserved. So we respect the government that has asked, and that's key, that the government has asked the congregations perhaps to uh, you know, not meet, <clears throat> or if they do, uh, just 10 people or less. Um, and uh, some congregations have, have worked that through. Um, but uh, we, are guide, we are aware of them that they've asked us. They, they're guidelines. They're not a law in the state of Ohio that we not meet. But in some states, the governors have made it a law that uh, churches do not meet. This is in, but uh, with the Ohio governor <clears throat> is in keeping with the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, which boldly but simply states, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So the U.S. Constitution protects the church from government overreach into the free exercise of religion and the right to peaceably assemble. So we're okay in Ohio. But it is concerning to see pastors have been arrested in states like Florida, Mississippi, California for assembling in worship. Additional states have banned worship gatherings as well. Yet in these states, they're still gathering. There are gatherings in spite of their state's mandate to not have any church meetings at all. Now, these pa pastors have been uh, hassled or arrested, and many of them have quoted from Acts what we just read. We must obey God rather than men. Well, thankfully, the uh, Justice Department in the U.S., the Federal Justice Department, is stepping in and reminding these states that the actions of banning worship and arresting pastors is unconstitutional. Um, the Justice Department took the side of a Mississippi Christian church where this past week where local officials had tried to stop the Holy Week services where the people had driven into the parking lot and received the audio of the message on their FM radios through a small FM transmitter that was placed in the church. So the local uh, government sent eight policemen sent to arrest the pastor and fine each of the people worshiping in their cars $500 each. And the U.S. Justice Department said, no, you can't do that. And they sided with the congregation that had countersued <clears throat> the local government. Uh, it was noted, too, that uh, there was a drive-in restaurant just a few blocks away where people were driving in in their cars and rolling down their windows and talking to each other. Uh, so it's interesting how quickly some state governments in the United States unilaterally set aside the First Amendment and sent armed policemen to arrest those Christian worshipers because they were labeled a threat to society. Now, that's what happened with Peter and the early apostles and the Christians in the first hundred years or so of the Christian church. They were labeled by government as threats to society, persecuted and arrested, and in some cases even uh, killed. So thankfully, <clears throat> now in the United States, note that this shift in attitude happened in just a matter of a few weeks that um, suddenly Christians uh, in these states were labeled as a threat to society and were being arrested. Thankfully, the First Amendment issues are getting worked out, and we pray it never happen again. But what a wonderful country where we do have that First Amendment that allows us to gather together, and we will again. So I'm at peace with that. I'm not anxious about that at all. Yes, we must obey God rather than men, 
God does indeed call us in Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verse 25, not to forsake gathering together. But today we gather uh, via the internet with these videos. We choose to be apart now, yet know that we are together in mission and ministry. We know this is a temporary arrangement and that we will soon be able to gather again here in the building. So meanwhile, you are connected to Jesus, and you are connected to Jesus, and you are connected to Jesus, and I am connected to Jesus, and we're all connected to Jesus, and, um, and we are together while being apart, you see. Uh, we are together while being apart in Jesus. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for the church, for all in need, and for the whole of God's creation, that today we celebrate the hope that is ours through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who took the wounds of death into his body on the cross for the sins of the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may never doubt you or turn away from the joy of life and light that is ours through Christ's resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For people who know only travesty, tragedy, and the grave, and have yet to come to the fullness of the knowledge of your risen love, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all of your creation that moans and groans for the day of the final liberation of all your children, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have died or are now dying, that the tombs ahead may also be opened in the resur resurrection of the dead, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the coronavirus and all such things be kept away from people everywhere, and those infected be released and healed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in the medical community who are working tireless hours to help others, also protect the first responders and men and women of the military. And we thank you for the teachers and educators that are working extra hours learning how to communicate with the students uh, with distance learning, even in our early childhood center. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in local, state, and federal government in the U.S. and around the world who have to make difficult decisions. We especially lift up Mayor Bobst and Governor DeWine and President Trump. Grant them wisdom and integrity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Speed the day when we can once again gather in person with one another under this roof for worship, witness, and learning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be and abide with you always. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. <laughs>